So before we dive into the uh, Bulla Bulla community, uh, also known as Mount Warning Eco Village, later to, come on, to become known as Nightcap on Minjimbal, just wanted to make a quick correction on the flow of events in the bankruptcy of Adrian Brennock. Uh, I didn't explain it very well that on the 19th of June there was a hearing set where the bankruptcy notice that had been issued on him by the tax office was going to be heard by the courts as to whether it would stand or not. A week before that, on the 12th of June, was when uh, Adrian Brennock's solicitor, Rose Litigation Lawyers, would have filed the two affidavits that are listed here, along with the uh, uh, notice to set aside the bankruptcy notice. Then, subsequently, that triggered the court hearing date from the 19th of June to be adjourned and a new court date listed and because uh, court dates have to be from 28 days of the notice uh, it has to be 28 days from the 15th of June when it was sent out to the Commissioner of Tax and thereby the 14th of August is the date set to hear the original bankruptcy notice application and to also hear the counter that uh, Adrian Brennock put in. The counter that he put in to get the notice, the bankruptcy notice set aside was dismissed and the standing matter of the bankruptcy notice was finalised by consent. So that's just a quick clarification on the way I explained that. Before we get into uh, talking about the Bulla Bulla community and how it's uh, how it all started, because it started back in 2014 with a couple. Uh, the man involved is putting forward his affidavit and from his perspective on how this couple uh, approached this. This man's name is Andrew Cody. And his statement is as follows from the affidavit that has been notarised and is a legally sworn statement. So the statement, the affidavit statement by Andrew Cody dated the 20th of August 2019 states the follows. I, Andrew Cody, hereby affirm 1. In 2014, I had been looking for land with my partner to start a community. I found some very very suitable land at Mount Burrell, New South Wales, 322 Kyogle Road and 3200 Kyogle Road, both being sold by the same vendor and as they were on separate titles with one holding, together seemed perfect for our project as the land at 3222 could be used as private community land and the caravan park and the commercial district at 3200 Kyogle Road next door could be used by the community as a public interface and income to go towards improving the community as a whole in the future. So me and my partner put our best offer in to purchase the land and it was refused. Point two. Meanwhile, I attended a Freedom Summit in Brisbane, organised by Mark Darwin and Adrian Brennock. In the summit, Mark Darwin gave a speech where he mentioned a community he was starting in Bellingen, New South Wales. I arranged to meet with him at another date, with the idea of using him as a mentor to help me understand better at what it was I was going to have to do to set up my own community. Mark Darwin agreed to meet with me. After several meetings with Mark Darwin, taking advice on setting up my community, I mentioned my vision for the land, that I was trying to obtain 3222 and 3200 Kyogle Road. Point three. At one of the meetings soon to follow, Mark Darwin said the community in Bellingen had fallen through. 
So Mark Darwin said that he had a community now with no land and I had land but no community so we teamed up which to me seemed perfect as it would put me many more steps ahead of achieving my goal of setting up a community I had dreamed of doing. So I invited Mark Darwin to come and see the land at 3222 and 3200 Kayaku Road, which he did, and I showed him around. Point four. I introduced Mark Darwin and Adrian Brennock to the real estate agent that I had been dealing with on the, la with on the land at Mount Burrell. And from that point on, Mark Darwin and Adrian Brennock took over the, the negotiation process for the purchase of the land on behalf of the community and myself. Point five. After seeing the land, Mark, da Mark Darwin was keen to te team up and impressed me with how AB, Adrian Brennock and himself, had already had a legal structure for a community worked out and set up, which I thought was great as it would save lots of time and energy on setting up our community project. So I agreed to let Mark Darwin and Adrian Brennock look after the financial and legal side of things. Point six. So we teamed up and soon after we formed the steering committee that would later consent uh, consist of nine unit shareholders working together promote and help setting up the intended community. The steering committee of nine were Mark Darwin, Adrian Brennock and myself, Andrew Cody, Tamady and Sarah who had been involved in the Bellingen community and to my understanding had already um, paid their 40000 to Mark Darwin to be a part of the Bellingen community that then were later invited by Mark Darwin to the Mount Burrell community project. George and Sue, who later pulled out before we acquired the land and was replaced with Stephen and Kelly, Craig Scott, Manuel Agus, and also Naraya and Evan, Cherie Stokes, who apparently all contributed superannuation towards buying the commercial district on behalf of the community in exchange for a lot entitlement on Bulla Bulla. Something similar was also done with Mark and Bex who paid some money with the balance from superannuation being held in, in a self-managed super fund under the commercial property as well, which was said would be part of the community and would not allow shareholders outside the community to hold more than 49%, which would give the community members 51% control. This would ensure that the community would own it all together and maintain control of it for the future. Point seven. In practice, the steering committee was kept informed of progress with marketing, sales of block entitlements and associated meetings with the real estate agent and potential new community members. A committee to guide the early part of the process before purchase of the land, which was intended to be dissolved when we had enough investors to buy the land. Point eight. After the land was bought, all purchase money creditors were to own the land in common as members of an incorporated association entitling them to equal say in all aspects of running the community and the commercial with co-ownership of the land. Point nine. All sh shares were to represent an equal share of ownership of the land as a whole with exclusive use of a small bit of land on the back block, which was to be the residential area. Those that were in first had first choice of sites from a site plan based on the access roads. Point 10. 
It was that the steering committee would contribute 40,000 each unit, or sweat equity, to the value of 40,000 for their unit share of the land, which would entitle them to the exclusive use of a 10, 5 and then 3 acre lot with co-ownership of the common land. Myself being an excavator operator, I was to contribute by fixing roads, roadworks, to the value of 20,000, which was completed and 20,000 finder's fee for finding the property and my work on that, so far as being payment for my unit share of the land within the communal land. Point 11. We, the steering committee, plan to sell more shares to investors by which time five acre shares was deemed to be a better block size, which was later reduced to three acres for each investor. At this stage, draft deeds were apparently being written up by Adrian Brennock and Mark Darwin and Roth Wall, and development applications we were told were also being done. Several investors bought in, Manuel Agus, Stephen and Kelly McSween, Richard Moat, Mark Bloomer, Philip Morandini, uh, Craig and Holly Stewart, oh, Craig and Holly, Stuart Newman, Ron Berry and more. At this stage, we had paid the deposit for the land and were focused on the marketing. Point 12. All discussions about the community legal structure were quickly dismissed by Mark Darwin and Adrian Brennock, Brennock, who argued that this could only be done once we had the land and the investors who had paid for the land could have a say in how the constitution would be written, and this should be done by consensus after land purchase once we had a quorum of co-owners. Point 13. The legal legwork was to be done for us by Mark Darwin and Adrian Benrock who claimed to have it in, all in hand and had been having multiple meetings with lawyer Roth Wall who was the community lawyer responsible for the legal side of the purchase, as well as contracts and conveyancing. Our involvement in this process consisted of hearing reports from Mark Darwin and Adrian Brennock. Point 14. There was no discussion at this stage around Adrian Brennock and Mark Darwin being paid for legal or marketing work as this was to be considered the sweat equity donated in lieu of paying the 40000 for the exclusive use of the three acres and community land share. They said they would be mentioning the community at their next Freedom Summit and did not discuss anything regarding costs. Point 15. More investors came over the course of the next months. Mary Lou, Naraira, Nevin, Melissa, Brian, Phil Dixon, Mark and Beck, Gillian Norman, Nate, Starr and Terry, Nicole. And uh, several people, including myself, moved onto the property and began work to improve the land to make way for their permanent residence on the land. Point 16. Rothwall came to one of our community meetings on the land explaining the many benefits we could exploit in regards to help getting our development applications approved for rural land sharing through council with ownership of the commercial precinct and could extend it to the front title. Point 17. At this stage, we had enough investors' money to buy the land, yet we were told by Adrian Brennock and Mark Darwin in June 2015 
that they had arranged a loan in order to have enough money in the kitty to build a community centre and improve access and people were agreeable. This loan ended up being for 600000 which we did not find out until much later and was told this was to fix the bridge, some of the roads and build the community centre. None of this eventuated. Point 18. Everyone was looking forward to the next phase where we would have a proper communal framework and committees were already forming to administer the many different aspects of the community project. Mary Lou was put in charge of finances. She was to be given the books uh, which took, in, took an inordinate, <laughs> inordinately long time to not happen, raising suspicion and with repeated calls for financial transparency by many meters, uh, members at meetings. Point 19. This issue became quite heated as investors were keen to see money being spent on infrastructure. Then, in December 2015, Without any valid reason, Mark Darwin and Adrian Brennock announced to the unit holders that there was no money left in the kitty to pay for anything, which seemed very strange as there had been no talks on how the money had been spent and nothing to show for it. As we, the community, had been expecting to buy materials to fix the farmhouse, roads, the bridge down the front, and build a community centre hall or on the land and we were not being told that all the money had gone. Point 20. From this point relationships between some of the unit holders deteriorated rapidly especially towards Mark Darwin and Adrian Brennock for their non-transparency on finances withholding what should be financial community-owned records, which then in time resulted in everyone being evicted from the land. We were told that the land had gone into liquidation due to lack of finances. Without anyone being given repayments for their money, they placed in care of Mark Darwin and Adrian Brennock to purchase the land, purchase the commercial land, and establish the correct community structures for in-house community law, build the community centre, repair the bridge and to carry out other needed work on the land. And there ends the sworn statement of Andrew Cody and his series of events, very brief uh, summation of what occurred over the few months uh, from the beginning to the Freedom Summits in 2014. These also play a very big part. Um, Mark Darwin was, uh, well, he's got all the Freedom Summit videos on his website, but there is not a video up there of a particular speaker at that summit who called himself Mr X and claimed to be a barrister and uh, apparently is the person that was required to make statements about not speaking in public to several different bodies because of it. And the taxation office made him bankrupt over it. Now the interesting thing is that um, I did not fully understand Adrian Brannock's association with the Freedom Summits and Mark Darwin until you do a, f a search on Freedom Summits and find out who was running the show. And there is just a little query that I have about it all because you've got two people that are involved with something. One is promoting it more than the other. But as far as I'm aware... Adrian Brannock has been the only one that had to swear 
that he would not speak publicly and was made bankrupt for it. So clearly the activities of the two different people involved, and I'm not going to say the other person right now because I can't confirm it, it's not right in front of my face, I'm 99% sure, but um, it's the two people that are constantly involved here in directing what is told to the community about what is going on and what they're doing are two different things. Uh, the people that should have been having the say and the control over the money. Um, anyway, that's for another video. I want to make these short. This is merely an introduction to um, how the scenario started by those that actually participated in it and were affected by it. There are other statements I will do other videos on. Uh, some of them are much longer though, uh, clearly more involved. And that may actually come down to the fact that the uh, statement here that was done by Andrew Cody was done only last year, whereas the statements done by other people were done at the time when they, it was very uh, emotionally charged for them. And so, and there was a lot of detail, a lot more detail that they put into things. So we will dive in more to other people's perspectives and what they experienced from their sworn affidavits. And with that, I'll leave it at that and catch you next time.